Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous two videos we saw that it seems to be pretty difficult to explain why anything exists at all and why matter exists. And of course there's only a few possible answers. One of them could be that there's a God that created it all or there was some event, let's call it a Big Bang, where everything began. But there's some major problems with the Big Bang Theory, and I thought I'd point out some. Because, after all, it's a scientific theory, and it should always be questioned unless we know that it's absolutely true, that it's a, you know, a proof theory. And the Big Bang Theory, by far, is not yet a proof theory. Although there's some aspects of the Big Bang that I feel have pretty solid foundational evidence from observations that seem to say, yeah, there's some, something to it. But at the very early stages of the Big Bang, they claim some things happened that seem very difficult to understand and to believe, actually. So they claim here that during the very first one second of the existence of the universe, all the matter was formed from energy to matter. And in the previous video, we saw that, yes, indeed, we have examples of that happening, and so it is plausible. But all that happened in the very first one second of the existence of the universe, and based upon our theory, that's what it must have been. So let's assume that that is indeed the case. In one second, enough energy was transformed into matter, enough matter to make hundreds of billions, if not trillions of galaxies, and each galaxy containing billions to trillions of stars, and each star being absolutely humongous in size. Our Earth will fit into the Sun a million times, so that's just one star. Imagine billions and trillions of stars in each galaxy, and there's potentially trillions of galaxies. But then the big problem is that we know that when matter is formed, antimatter is formed as well. So if that many protons were formed, an equal number of antiprotons should have formed. And of course, when a proton meets with an antiproton, they will annihilate each other and turn back into energy. So, if all those protons were formed in the very first second of the universe, and the universe must have been very dense at the time, and at the same time, there must have also been that many antiprotons in that very, very dense universe, so that the collision between protons and antiprotons would have been extremely probable. Well, they should have just annihilated one another and it should have all turned back into energy. So where are those missing antiprotons? And there's a lot of them. 1 times 10 to the 8th and 80th is not a small number. That's a huge number of antiprotons. The same number of antiprotons as protons that can form trillions of galaxies. We have no explanation for that. I've seen explanations in textbooks, even textbooks that I've used in the classroom before. But they're not very satisfactory. It's a big problem that we can't explain. Also, the universe started as something really, really tiny. And sometimes they call it like a very tiny thing is maybe the size of an atom, filled with energy, enough energy to make trillions of galaxies. So first, the energy to be transformed into matter to make trillions of galaxies. But of course, if the universe is what that tiny, there's no room to make all that matter. Matter needs room, lots of room. Well, to explain that one, they came up with something called the inflationary period. Something must have happened at the very beginning of the universe to expand the universe extremely, extremely rapidly. And so the claim is that in 1 times 10 to the minus 35 seconds, the universe expanded by a factor of 10 to the 50th. Now, they never really explained how big it was when it started and how big it was when it ended. They just came with this big number that in a very tiny fraction of a second, 10 to the minus 35 seconds, the inflationary period would have caused the universe to grow tremendously in size to, of course, make room for all that matter to be created in the very next one second. But even as that's the case, and I would like to know somewhere, I would like to read it somewhere, how big they think the universe was, when in that first one second all the matter was then created, how dense the universe would have been at that time. Remember, matter causes gravity to exist, and gravity, acting on so much matter, that densely packed together, 
Well, you can imagine that even though the universe was expanding at a very high rate, the gravitational forces would have been enormous. They would have arrested that expansion and slammed everything back together again, perhaps into a giant black hole, which didn't happen. No one really says how big the universe was initially after that one second with all that matter in it and then calculate how much room that would need and how much space there would be between the atoms, how dense everything would be, and if that was actually even possible. They just kind of glossed over that one. Then they said that in the next 20 minutes, about one quarter of all the protons that were formed had then converted through nuclear fusion into helium, kind of what happens at the center of stars. But it would have happened very, very quickly because stars take millions if not billions of years to do so. Our sun will take about 10 billion years to turn all the hydrogen in its core into helium, but they claim that in 20 minutes, one quarter of all the hydrogen had turned into helium. Again, in order for that to happen, it must be extremely dense, like at the center, at the core of stars, and the temperatures would have had to be very, very high, which presumably that was the case. But if in those first 20 minutes, matter was so close together that nuclear fusion could happen so fast and furiously that in 20 minutes, not billions of years, but in 20 minutes, one quarter of all protons were converted to helium, then again, things must have been so dense, and why didn't gravity just slam everything together into a huge black hole? Or was the fusion process creating so much energy that it could push back against gravity and prevent the universe from collapsing? It's a good thought. Again, it seems kind of odd that we have to explain all these magical events with theories that we really don't understand to try and come up with a, a way of explaining why the universe even exists. But that's the theory, at least the very initial part of the theory, and of course not all of it, it's much more complicated and much more detailed than that, but at least it gives us a good overview that yes, we do have some very, very strong problems with the theory, with the Big Bang Theory, to try and explain how we got here in the first place. And that is a look at the Big Bang.